emergency surgery and it was one of the hardest things I've ever been through in my life. Hey guys, welcome back to Ag with Emma. If you're new here, my name is Emma. I go all over the place doing farm tours, farm work, and a lot of other different things. Last summer, I did custom harvest in the United States from May to November, going from Texas to North Dakota and back down again. So if you wanna see more of that, you can look back further on my channel. Today's video, I'm going to Australia. I did this in November and December, right after harvest was done in America. And I learned a lot. I got to operate case equipment, which was a first for me. Um, I also got to cut canola, which was also a first for me. And another first for me was having emergency surgery in a foreign country. So uh, that was not fun. And that kind of, it did not ruin my trip, but it did cut my trip short because I came home to recover some more and kind of be more in my element so I could recover emotionally, really, um, and physically. And it was a whole ordeal that I don't, I haven't shared a lot of details yet, but I'll share some more details at the end of this video. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the videos that I got from Australia. I did not get a lot because I was, I had a condition the whole time I was down there. I was very tired, um, kind of burned out really as well. So enjoy what I've got and hopefully I will be going back to Australia someday and I will make sure to get a lot more because I love it and I think everyone needs to see it. So enjoy. I came to meet my friend Jock. He's over there, and uh, I pulled up, and he has a broken one of these. Right, this uh, those sheared out, not holds the belt together, and so this one we're trying to straighten it, and then we pulled this one apart, and that's broken. So, oh well, we're fixing it though. He has spares. So this was my first time in a canola field. Had to record it, and then the next day we cut a sample, brought it to the sampling stand. Here's what part of that process looked like and they were testing for things like oil, moisture. We just had to make sure that we were good and ready to go. And this is the tractor and the cart that I got to drive around. So 200 case Magnum. It was pretty slick, had the leather seats and all the goods. It did not have a scale in it like I was used to. So that was a little different to get used to. And the equipment has oversized signs on it. That's important in Australia. And then we had to get set up at the bins. That's the auger going up to the top of the bin. And that's Tim. He was driving the auger around. But really pretty down there. And then dumping, they had tipper trucks. I think they call them tippers. No hopper bottoms. And it's just pretty. Australia is so pretty. I wish everyone could experience it. The sky feels different down there. It's just a very gorgeous sight. I'm just saying from my seat, I cannot see inside this trailer, it's very tall. They told me to load that trailer like the same height as the first pile I had in the whole way across. I think I couldn't have done that any better. Well, I could have, but pretty spot on. This is my first time cutting or like taking part in harvest for canola. And it's been an unnaturally wet and cold year here in Australia for some parts, maybe all the parts, but in Victoria where I'm at it's been especially wet and cold and right now it's supposed to be like in the hundreds but right now it's only in about the 70s so it's been kind of weird normally they'd be around not done with canola but they would have been well started with it so the fields we're in are very soft and squishy we have to be very careful with where we drive and where we're you know cutting into the canola because it can spike and get really wet and then the, the tires on the combine keep spinning out so he'll have to back up and it leaves big ruts in the field which they'll pull a disc over probably later because they can't really leave those bog marks oh, there he is and we have to leave some parts of the canola if it's too wet or if you know you're getting stuck you just have to leave it and come back later so I'll show you what that looks like. It's really messy and I'm not used to it. He just finished this field. You can see him leaving kind of ruts and tracks over there. And I'm gonna go this way because he left some ruts over there. So there's a spot we've been going in and out of. This canola in front of me is pretty dark and that's because it was sitting in water and it just like died. So there is water running through there um, and that, you know, just turns it to that darker color as it does when plants get waterlogged. So 
we drove through here, and I'll show you, you can see all the ruts. And I hate driving across the field and leaving ruts, but there's just really no other option. So I'm gonna come over to this corner right here. I guess I could have went where he was going, but you're about to see what I mean when I say we have to pull out of areas sometimes. Ah, yep, right here. So I'm gonna straddle those tire tracks. And we're actually getting tracks for the combine next week, so that'll really help. We're just gonna straddle these bad boys because the grain cart doesn't sink as bad as the combine does, like so. And then this canola we'll come back for when it's drier and we have no idea when that will be. That was wet. There is some more of where he gets bogged, as they like to call it here. It's just very, very muddy. But there are some areas that can be harvested. So here's another. And we're just gonna have to come back for this when it's, you know, dry. So he had to stop right there because his tires were spinning out and back up and... I'll pull to the stall. So another first for me was using a pickup header. I'd never even seen one of these. Maybe I had, but maybe not realized it. And that was used when we put canola in windrows with the windrower instead of direct heading, which is when you cut it with the draper header. So we're gonna use that to pick up the windrows instead of using a draper header. Oh, that's in my shoe. Going on a little stroll through the woods because we won't fit on that bridge. So we got to go through the ghetto. So just to give you context, this is what canola looks like. That's the seed. Very small, very light. Look at how easy it blows around in the wind. I'm not moving my hand at all there, except for right there, but blows around super easy. And it was not great canola where we were at because of the floods and a lot of different other factors.
So just from right here where I'm sitting in my tractor waiting for him to open up the field or paddock as they call it, um, you can see kind of the water damage, waterlogged stuff that he's cutting into right now. So that is way darker than the stuff behind him. That is not normal. So we want that goldish color canola. So typically the waterlogged stuff, there might be some stuff in it. It might be moldy since it sat in water or got waterlogged. Um, you can see it goes all the way down there basically. That's where the water was kind of flowing through the field. And then you want that gold colored stuff. The black gold as we like to call it because it's a uh, black seed and it's worth a lot of money. And then the stalks are green because it wasn't windrowed or sprayed. Normally that gets rid of that. So with the pickup head, we put these flaps on and those basically lay the canola stubble down on the ground so it doesn't beat up the tires so much because canola stubble is really hard on tires so this is like a little protection flap. This hangs off the header right there. Um, today is the 19th of December, and right now I'm in Australia, I'm in Victoria, and I have been here for a month working on harvest, and, um, two days ago I had emergency surgery, and it was one of the hardest things I've ever been through in my life, because I'm on a different continent. By myself. I'm not by myself. I have a lot of good people that have supported me through this, but it's really hard to not feel alone. Um, I didn't have my mom with me. I've always had my mom with me. When I go through things like that. But I don't think I'm going to talk about it right now, but I didn't want to forget how being here feels. So, I'll have more details when I'm ready to record that, but for right now, I know I'm going to be okay, and I know healing is a process, and I know that everything happens for a reason, and that I know that God still loves me, and that he's definitely watching because because that's what I know so I think that's all I can say right now because I can't really think and um, I'm flying home on Thursday and it's really sad but I get to go hug my mom and I get to be with my family for Christmas and I get to keep healing um, physically and emotionally so that's probably what's best right now, and I'll have more details later. So just a couple more details behind that emergency surgery. Um, I was internally bleeding. That's why it was an emergency. If you're familiar with that at all, you uh, it's you got to be quick when you're internally bleeding. Um, I was so scared the whole time, but I had Jess with me, and it you know I'm still alive. I'm very grateful. It was a very eye-opening experience and I learned a lot. Um, it is sad that it cut the trip short, but I know and believe that there are no coincidences and that God for sure had his eye on me and was looking out for me and has a plan because there were so many people praying for me and I'm getting chills just thinking about it now. There were so many people messaging me and praying and I wouldn't have made it through that without those messages and prayers. <sighs> because I'm just so grateful for everyone that um, made sure I was okay and made sure, you know, I, I'm still getting through it. I still have people message me and ask how I'm doing, how I'm holding up. So that is a little bit more detail behind what happened. Um, but definitely 
zero out of 10 would recommend having surgery far away from home. Um, not that it was bad. They took really good care of me in the hospital, but it just was not part of the plans. So um, that is all I have for Australia. I'm sorry it was not more. I really wish I would have showed you guys more of it. I was just so, I think I was really just burned out more than anything. Um, and that just, it happens with content creation. So I'd also like to thank Jess and Tim for taking care of me. And there were so many other people down there that cared about me and made sure that I was looked out for and taken care of. So um, thank you guys for making my trip quite literally unforgettable in a very large part of my life. Um, but that is all I have for Australia. If you guys would like to see more content, make sure you subscribe um, and I'll be here. I have more farm tours coming out for you guys. And as always, thanks for watching. Hasta la pasta.